the author G.K. Chesterton, when asked why he became a Catholic, replied, to have my sins forgiven. This quote in today's readings made me wonder, how many times has God, how many times has my family or my friends or others forgiven me, say, since 1970? That's about when I reached the age of reason. At least that's what my parents told me. Though I'm pretty sure I knew a year before, but that's another story. But it is one of those questions that I think if we knew the answer, in my case, I'd be both grateful, but also to a certain extent embarrassed that I needed to be forgiven that many times. But I believe it's the corollary to this question that today's gospel deals with. How many times have I forgiven people? Along with the other question, how many times have I refused to forgive? The Old Testament readings and the Psalms are full of pleadings for God's mercy. And today, Azariah begs God's compassion on behalf of his people. He cites the covenant, the relationship of Abraham and Isaac, and the promises God has made to the people, seeking to move God to give them just another chance. It's reminiscent of my brother and I in our youth making all sorts of similar appeals to our parents. The difference is Azariah is willing to admit that their national demise is due to their sin. Likewise, Chesterton, like Chesterton, there is an admission of sin and a recognition that no prince, no prophet or any sacrifice will work to get them off the hook. God is their only hope. So if we are made in this image of God, it stands to reason that we are called to be merciful to each other. From the beginning of time, this has been our challenge. We might say, yes, God can forgive over and over again, but we are not God. And so Peter asked that question that we both want, but also don't want to know the answer. How many times must we forgive? You know, after a certain age, forgiving someone even seven times seems pretty generous, unless you're taking a, talking about taking the last piece of pizza level of forgiveness. But Jesus raises the bar much higher to 77 times. I know there's some math fans out there. That's a 1,000% increase to what Peter thought. This is the point that I think we struggle with most until we go back to God in two ways. <laughs> the first is I think we need to regularly examine our consciences for the big and the small ways that we sin. And then we need to seek God's forgiveness when it's in the mortal case in confession. And we also need to seek forgiveness from those that we have hurt along the way in the small and in the big ways. For it's when we experience God's loving mercy that we are able to both ask for forgiveness from others, but also to grant it. None of us want to be that unforgiving servant, and yet it can be so hard to forgive all at once. At times, in fact, I'd say most times, it's a process. It's a process that takes prayer and encouragement, and healing, and time, and of course, God's grace. The Catechism reminds us that the heart that offers itself to the Holy Spirit turns injury into compassion, and it purifies the memory in transforming the hurt into an intercessory prayer. For anyone struggling to forgive another, living or deceased, as we have faith in God's mercy for us to be forgiven, we also have faith that God will heal and move our hearts to show that same mercy, especially in the hardest of situations. So my brothers and sisters, 
Let us take a look at our lives and our hearts. Let us be open to receiving God's mercy so that we can share that with others, especially in the most challenging situations we face.